They know that I go flip mode when I bust the rhymes Man's on a different thing when I told him a hundred times I did a bunch of crimes and none of them were done for the vine So you can take that bullshit and stick that where the sun don't shine The summer's up, it's about to get real cold Late nights in the studio with the bros Welcome back to the NBH Podcast, Money Buys Happiness Guys, appreciate you tapping in We love you guys for real, you know what to do Like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you thought of the podcast Anyone you want to see going forward Really fucking comment anything to be honest I don't really care at all If you're listening, five star review, we need that Yeah, yeah, Spotify Follow us, Apple, Spotify Yes, Appreciate yes. you all Yo, who do we got in the building today? Got the glam boy. Yes. Mm-hmm. My guy. Oh my God, my guy. Thank you guys for having me. How you doing, bro? Oh, fuck, man. Just chilling, you know? Just chilling? Just chilling. We you finally know? got you in? I know, right? Fuck, Yo, it's, it's pretty for crazy. For real, man. For real. Um, I was telling, obviously, Ant, and we spoke a little bit on, on IG. It's just, for anyone watching, we went to elementary school together. Way which is back. crazy. Which is way like, crazy. <laughs> I look back, I'm like, damn, that's crazy, bro. It's crazy, You're right? a year older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember that. That was, that was crazy. And, and just talking about how this came full circle yeah man. which is which That's is wild man yeah it's crazy like the past that life be taking us right for nice. real for nice. real but yo we've been watching you obviously watching mm. your growth watching all your success that's happened i would say since fucking i seen you in in elementary school which is crazy yeah. um and i know a lot has happened in the last few years mm. uh, but i want to we we want to get into like at the beginning how you started getting into it um there's a lot of i would say younger creatives and and people in the music industry that listen to us so they, they like to kind of pick brains when it comes to anyone that's that's kind of seen success in the music industry because it is very difficult to get um, to get noticed and to stay to stay noticed to stay relevant. So maybe take us back. I mean, when when I remember you, like bro, we were just like I said, I was a year younger. I remember you were you were a sick ball player. That's what I remember about you. Um, Shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That's way back. That was way back. Yeah, then. I know. But yeah. that's that's what I remember. That's how I remember just you in general. But then I mm-hmm. seen. The, the years after that, I seen you start getting into music and stuff like that. Um, so I want to definitely know how that transition happened, how you even got into music to begin with. Shit. I mean, like, I feel like it really started, um, like, it became like a little hobby in like elementary school, obviously, you know, just like writing and shit. And then I feel like when I got to high school, it was like I was playing sports, like mainly football and shit. But then um, I don't know, like, I was always like that nigga in the back of the class, just like, Kind of like just writing in my notebooks, rhymes and shit. Like just writing bars down or yeah, what? just writing <laughs> bars, like you know, like then I started like actually going and like rapping in front of people and like not battle rapping, but just like rapping in front of my friends and shit. Yeah. And then um, I don't know, like got out of high school and then I like low key was taking it serious, but like I wasn't like fully all in, you know. Okay. Um, I feel like once I turned like maybe nineteen, twenty, I kind of like really. 20, I think it was 20, I just really started, like, locking in and making, like, shooting a video, like, an actual, like, task and, like, you know, putting my music out and just trying to get so out So you're there. looking at it, like, more of a career at that point. You're like, okay, I can yeah. build something around this. No, 100%. Like, I just, like, I just knew I didn't want to go, like, the sport route. Yeah. And I didn't see anything else that was, like, kind of, like, my passion besides music. So I was just, like, kind of just went full with it. I, I, I took it more, I took it serious, but it was still fun for me at the same time. So yeah. You know, um, was it was it like uh, like SoundCloud releases and stuff at that time? Yeah, it was like SoundCloud. It was like uh, that piff. Jeez. It was like like that day. Like like those were like the the platforms at that time. But like, um, I, I feel like I once I moved downtown, like downtown Toronto, it kind of like uh, it put me in that in that like social circle where like I was meeting so many other people, yeah. and like it just made like the music like a thing. Like, yeah. you know, like people just kind of recognize me as like an artist at that point because I was dropping music at the same time I was like partying and like meeting all these people. So it just like all came full circle. Bro, when you party, bro, your network goes crazy. Oh, like you can crazy. grow your network in a crazy way. I I, I know you uh, you mentioned a few times like on some other interviews that you moved <clears> downtown, <throat> you got a loft with some of your boys mm-hmm. and you yeah. guys were just killing it there. So maybe talk about that experience a bit, living in the city. I know you mentioned it a bit just now. But yeah. but kind of like coming up in the city and and what kind of benefits you saw from from living right here downtown? I mean, like at that time, that was like a it was like this like little pocket of time in Toronto where like I feel like everybody was kind of like just like really excited for music. Yeah, uh, like the weekend was coming out at the time, and like not, well not coming out, but like his music was circulating at the time like really heavy, especially in the United States. 
Drake, obviously, Tory Lanez. Like, this was just like this whole thing happening where like there was like actual artists around us that were like tangible that were making moves. So yeah. um, it it just created this cool little hype around the city at the time. And uh, I feel like that's pretty much when like I was really taking music serious and like, you know, so when I would go out, I would maybe like nine times out of 10, I'll be like bumping shoulders with someone that's connected to that person that's already successful in music. So um, yeah, I was like, it was like around that time for sure. Yeah. And, and was there, was there like a, at, like at what point do you drop a track and it's like, oh shit, okay. Like this is like real now. Cause like you said, you're going out, people are noticing you as an artist, but was there one track or, or maybe a period of time where it was like, Okay, um, cool. Like this is this 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 is really real now. Yeah, I think it was like I used to like go to like all these like little they felt like almost like boiler room parties that yeah. they were throwing in the city. It wasn't boiler room, but it was like that was like the vibe of the Similar. Parties. Yeah, yeah. Like real hipster and shit. Mm -hmm. And like they were like play my tracks and like I would get like a reaction from the crowd and like from there that's when I kind of realized okay, shit, this this is uh it's like, you know, peaking people's interest and um I feel like that situation happening enough, like enough times was what kind of landed me my first like real relation in the music industry, which was with like um, my boy uh, Lamar through XO. And then okay. that you guys already know, like that whole opportunity just arose from like partying and like my music being played in like a, a venue and him hearing it. So I was gonna say, how, how do you get connected <clears throat> to him? Because you say you're getting connected, but what, like, how, how does it go down? Because I feel like everyone always wants it. Like, was it an email? Was it your boy yeah, through no, text? It, like, it what was, was uh, it? was literally like, they were, I was at like a, I forgot what club it was or what venue it was. It was like a bar slash venue. And um, uh, Hailey from XO was, was there. And I guess they were like playing my, my track and like people were just fucking moshing at that. Like, yeah. it, was, it was going crazy. <laughs> like, it was pretty, okay. going, it was going crazy in there. And, um, I guess he asked someone whose song this is because, you know, like everybody was kind of turning up to it and shit and like going kind of crazy. And then um, that's how I met him. And then we linked up and then he introduced me to Lamar. Lamar got like uh, familiar with the music as well. And like it was just like just organic vibes, to be honest. Like it was more like big bro relationship than anything. Mm, and um, that turned into what it turned into. You yeah. Know? And you also you also mentioned, which a lot of artists do mention as well. Um, like you, there was a point where you decided to take it serious. Like there was a flip of the switch kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a lot of artists are in that. You can put them in that category of like, okay, they're trying out. They like making <clears throat> music. They don't know if they should take it seriously, stuff like that. So when, when you decided to flip that switch, mm -hmm. how did, how did that change for you? Like what, what in terms of your mindset, maybe your daily schedule, your routine, stuff like that, what changed for in your life to kind of be like, yo, this is me now taking it seriously. Um, you know what it was, bro? I honestly think it was it was like this weird thing was happening where like, you know when you like write down your goals on paper and then they just like start happening one at a time? Yeah. Like it was literally happening before my eyes. It was like crazy. I'm like, yo, I'm going to meet this person. Then like two months later it would happen. Then I'm like, I'm going to perform here. Then it would happen. Yeah, yeah. So like, it, was, it was honestly just like a series of all these things on my bucket list happening one after the other. And it was just yeah. kind of like shit, this is what happens when you take something serious and you actually go chase your goals, you know? I feel like you guys could relate to that. Of you guys course. are probably like, yo, we want to interview this person or like have this person. And then they're here, yo, you know? Been, been yeah, doing, we've been you know doing, doing that, yeah. I, yeah. I just feel like that's some shit that be happening when you like really go full force and take your 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 shit serious. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of what really made the 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 engine start really going because I'm after like the fifth or sixth thing, I'm like, yo, this isn't just some like random occurrence. This is yeah, like, yeah. this is happening because I'm actually tapping in and I'm I'm really putting in that work. Yeah. So. And after the first time it happens, you're pretty much like, it's like a it's like a formula at that point. You're like, all right, it did it once. Yeah. But I think it's all about belief, right? I think you had a belief in yourself and you're like, all right, I'm envisioning myself performing two months from now because I believe it. I believe yeah. I could do it. Where I think a lot of artists, they might not have that kind of confidence. But then you might have had it right off the bat. But then you're also, like you said, rubbing shoulders with a guy like Lamar, mm. which like for anybody listening who doesn't know, Lamar is like the creative behind XO, like the Weekends label. So to be in a room with that guy is already kind of just like something I know a lot of people would just dream about, yeah, you know, no, especially 100%. as an artist of, 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 of any sort. Right. So mm. when when you say you met him and then that kind of like I want to walk through that, that sort of storyline from there, you meet him and you said it was sort of like a little like a a big bro relationship he's obviously seeing like hey the reaction to this guy's music is mm. is good like yeah. it's, it's a it's a good reaction so walk us through how that starts to unravel and, and become more serious because i feel like that's when it became very 
serious, like very real. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, yeah, like it was, it was honestly just organic as fuck. Like he, we linked up. He like fuck with the music, obviously. It was just cool. Like I was shooting texts here and there, and then like, um, you know, like one day I just like, I'm like, I right, like, let me just shoot this shot, you know. So I hit him up, my, um, and we had like a little meeting, and I'm just like, yo, like. I would like love for you to be a part of like what I'm doing and like, you know, kind of give me like, you've already been giving me so much like advice and, and guidance in this already. So like, how about we like, you know, try make it serious if that's what you would be willing to do. Mm -hmm. And like, he was with it like right away. And, it was like, just like that, eh? Yeah, and he just like started managing me off a of rip. And then um, okay. we uh, we just like working, just dropping music, uh, you know, just like the whole engine, I guess, like started in terms of that sense. I wasn't even like EXO at this point. I was just like, kind of just like being managed by by Lamar. Uh -huh. And then um, I don't like everybody embraced me. You know, it wasn't just like I came through and I'm only fucking with this person. It was like the whole family embraced me from like Abel to to Cash to you know everybody in that in that whole circle. So then I feel like it kind of became like yeah, like. I, I became part of like the team with that okay. sense, but I, I still wasn't even on like paper as like, like, like label. Oh, it's just either. like okay, like let's just like you're gonna manage <laughs> me type of thing, just a word of like a, like a word like agreement sort yeah. of, or just like no. Well, like the management aspect was like on paper okay. between okay. me and Lamar, okay. but it wasn't even like it wasn't like I wasn't signed to the label yet. Yes. Okay, so it was okay. just kind of just just being him working, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because you were building that. I feel like you were building that <clears> relationship <throat> for for a bit before the the signing happened, right? Mm -hmm. Like you were in some of the videos. The weekend's videos as well and that was before um so yeah i mean that good things take time i guess um mm -hmm. i wanted to even ask you do you think that you got noticed in the city because you were so like so there like you were downtown you were out you were meeting people you got to see all these people i mean bumping shoulders with these people do you do you attest any of that success at the beginning to just being on the ground and being out there yeah like i, I feel like i was really out like it was it was to the point where like I didn't have any comfortability in my life. Like I wasn't, I couldn't even get used to playing video games at home because I was never at home. Like I, it wasn't like really one of those for me. I was like literally out because on top of that, that's how I was making my money doing like other shit. I like I had to be out, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I just feel like that really became my lifestyle. Like that, it it was like cemented, yes. you know. Like I just had to be outside. Like every night out, at least six days a week. It was yeah. Fun, you know, plus being in the studio. Like I really wasn't at home at all, so you weren't sleeping. <laughs> I mean, like yeah, like it's just like sure. I, I was definitely like sleeping here and there, but like I wasn't fucking, I wasn't at home chilling like at all. Like it wasn't, it definitely wasn't one of those for a good four or five years, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure, like Lamar coming on to some extent, he could see that, right? He's probably like, okay, this kid's also like not just the music isn't just good, but there's like a hustle behind it, right? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure, like. I, yeah, it was pretty transparent. Like, he's he seen everything that was happening on my side, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, at that point, when does, essentially, you're saying that everyone, everyone's kind of, like, fucking with you, they're embracing you as family, like you're saying, Abel, Cash, mm -hmm. all these guys. W what was that like? like? What was that like for you, just, like, dry, you know, dropping tracks on SoundCloud, that piff, whatever, mm -hmm. to, like, okay, well, these people are, like, actually respecting me as sort of, like, a, f a family member in a way. Um, it was cool. Like it was definitely like, my first time, like really, uh, being like a part of like a like a team that I didn't create myself. Mm. You know, so it was a it was a real learning process. You know, like I, I got I got taught a lot of things. I got put on a lot of game. Um, and like also just like people having my back that like I I hadn't even known them for like more than a year, mm -hmm. and these people were having my back in like a lot of scenarios and situations that like you know obviously weren't like the craziest like positive things you know For so sure. um it was cool like it was definitely cool like you know it was a good it was it was it was definitely uh it like helped me you know because i don't I'm, I'm like the type of person i try not to make the same mistake twice so like having those people in my backcourt it kind of a uh, it put that pressure on me too where it's like yo i can't be making no more like i can't slip you know if true. i slipped once i can't slip twice you know true, what i mean so true yeah, you got you got like there's there's a name behind you now. There's a brand behind you in a way where yeah. it's like, yo, I'm not really trying to lose this. Like this is too big to lose. Yeah. And 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 then from there, when does it become official on paper? Like walk us through that process and and how that even works cuz I feel like for every artist, it's a little bit different. Everyone kind of has yeah. their own different situation with the <clears throat> label. I mean, um like it didn't really become anything on paper like in terms of like me signing to an actual label label. 
until 88 Glam Days. Mm -hmm. okay. This was just honestly just like me having management and like artist development. Yeah. You know, just like developing my sound, just growing as an artist, you know what I mean? True. But like True. still having these people in my backcourt if I need any advice, if I need any help, uh, like anywhere they went, I went. Like I was on tours with like with Abel. I was like here, I was there, I was at Coachella. Like, you know, this, it's is, crazy. Like, this <laughs> is all just before I even signed the deal. Yeah. This is just like out of love, you know? Damn. Like people just like really being like big bro. And that's and that's them like taking care of everything. <laughs> just being like, yo, you're rolling with us. Oh now. yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I definitely at that time I definitely wasn't like financially stable to like be like flying <laughs> here and there. Yeah, that's so what I'm like, saying. That's crazy. Yeah, it ain't like, cheap. Yeah, 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 I know no. that. So maybe talk to us about the start of 88 Glam and uh -huh. how that came to be. <clears throat> and was there even like a like <clears throat> was there any talks with you as to like, yo, if 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 this is something that you do, like you might end up getting signed. Was there any of those talks while while you were chilling um, with them? Yeah, so like pretty much uh 88 Glam happened like really organic. It was just uh, me, uh, me and um, Camino, 88 Camino. Uh, we always like made music together. This is like even before, this is like, this is like 20, like I don't even know, man. Like from as, as far as I was Derek Wise as a rapper, uh, like me and Camino been making music together, you know? Okay. <clears throat> and um, it was cool. Like we, uh, so we already had that like, that like, chemistry. I guess like chemistry, yeah. just making music together. Everything was like really just, you know, and um, we ended up not really talking for a good like year or two, and then we like linked back up. You know, like he uh, came back into the city. We linked back up, and um, at this time, um, like I said, I was I had management through Lamar. <clears throat> you know, and uh, I was like in EXO, but I wasn't like on paper or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then um, me and him just started making music together, and like you know, every everything I would make, I would just send over to like Lamar. I'll shoot him a text with the song attached. Just like that, yeah. Just check so, this you know, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I just like kept doing it. And like, this is like 88 Glam One Era, like the first album. So this is even before this. It's an album, you okay. know. This is we're just making these songs, and every song just a banger. Yeah. And I'm just sending them through, and then like you know, by like the sixth or seventh song, they he just like you know he got to talking and just like yo like what do you think about you know like you guys just like you know, and I'm like. Yeah, like, me and him actually been kind of thinking that at the same time. I just didn't really know how to, like, bring it to you, mm. you know? And um, it just, like, worked out, you know? Like, he's just like, all right, well, fuck. Like, you know, like, maybe you guys should just put together a project and, like, let's see what happens, you know? Okay. And as we were, like, making this project, we're obviously sending the records to these guys, so they're hearing it. And then they're just like, damn, like, oh, sh this, this, is be, this is about to be serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. You know, it's about to be serious. And just, so um, <clears throat> I guess, okay. like, yeah, that's how everything kind of, like, unfolded with that. Like, right before we finished the album, I guess everybody really just seen the vision. Like, we we really made people understand the vision and see what's about to happen. And, like, it's, like, it was, like, inevitable. They're just like, all right, yo, you guys are going to be a duo. We're signing you guys. We're going to give you guys a record deal. Bop, bop, bop. Okay. Done. You know, I so. got to say, from the outside looking in, like, the, <clears throat> the, the brand looked like, like it looked like you guys sort of fit perfectly under XO. Yeah. It was like, okay, like mm -hmm. if these guys are gonna go and sign anywhere, like this makes sense. But like even the like even the sound, in. like even mm -hmm. even everything, the sound, yeah. because it was, I even think Abel was doing something very different at that time too in terms of sound. And yeah. people were like, yo, like what kind of music is this? this is fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And then you guys come through, and it was the same kind of thing where very different sound. Even yeah. you and Camino have a very different sound, but it was yeah. very <clears throat> complementary to each other. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, yeah, like like I said, it, that just came from like years of us just like yeah. making music together. So we kind of like we understand each other's strengths and like weaknesses on certain records and like yeah. how to make it all come together and sound like like cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I feel like that's really what it was. Even you know? for the first record, like in terms of like the, the the vision that you had for it, like what were you guys thinking? What was your mindset behind it before releasing it? Like what did you want people to to get out of it? Yo, on it's like crazy when I hear like when I get like questions like that because it like things just move so fast. I wasn't yeah. even thinking like that. Yeah, yeah. I it didn't even cross my like. <laughs> it's like it's just a just heater. Like, like all right. Yeah, like when I think back to it, I'm like, yo, like that shit was like a big blur. Like it was just crazy. Like, it was so like one minute I was like recording an album in a kitchen in like a a shitty bungalow flat, and like <laughs> like crazy. the next week I'm like in a fucking like like penthouse loft in like the middle of Liberty Village. Yeah. Like getting ready to go on tour, so it's like it's just so it was fast. Quick. It, it was, was really quick. Yo, yeah, yeah. so fast. Like, yeah. And you guys, when you guys are putting this project together, this first one, like, and and you're and you're getting that reaction, and it's becoming like more real, more real. Like, what's the what's the like what are the conversations between you two? Like, 
you know what I mean? Like, damn, like we're really about to do this. Like I'm always, I'm always curious. Cause when we were, when we were waiting for like our deal, it was like a lot of conversations. Like, okay, when this goes down, like you try and plan ahead, even though you can't really like yeah. looking back, you can't really plan ahead, but we always had these like ideas like we'll try this. We're going to do that. Like whatever. Oh no. Like we was, we was like, definitely like we we're getty as fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, online shopping for the, <laughs> for the money you hit my account. Like, I'm like looking at what I'm finna buy in like two months, three months, you know, I'm like, I'm like, it was crazy. Like for sure. We were just like, we were, we were super excited for the, yeah. we, we like both felt it, you know, like everybody in the room felt it. So we we're just like, yo, like we just gotta be ready when it, when it happens, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's gonna come fast. I mean, know? even in terms of like monetizing on your music, <clears throat> that was probably the first time that you really saw it come through, right? Like in terms of making money from you making music. Yeah. Like, I mean, like that's the thing, like, Definitely, that was the first time, like, because, like, I was making money from my music before that, but it was it was more so, like, grants and, like, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. like... You do a show there. Yeah, a show here, there. show there. Like, I was I was doing shows for, like, at that time, like, um, I'm pretty sure, like, my last show as Derek Wise, I got paid, like, three grand, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then it was, like... Well, compared to... Fast the, forward, like, <laughs> literally 88 Glam Drops, and we get our first show, which was at, uh, it was for Jordan... We got uh, paid, I think it was like 25K. And that was like our first time getting like money. We yeah, just like, yeah. Damn, oh, nice. like <laughs> we, we just gotta go perform for fucking 15 minutes. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. Like, yeah, that's the yeah. life. So, like, it was that, that's that's the jump, right? It was yeah. like 3K a show. And then now we're making 25K a show yeah. in the span of a month, month and a half. Life changing right away. Yeah. So, and, and I remember too, like, we were, we were, I'm going to talk about the party we threw. We were trying to book yeah. you guys. I remember this, bro. This is crazy. Yeah. This, was like, this, this was, was crazy. Like, this was way what, back. What you, 2018. <laughs> this was uh, uh, we were. It was at the Masonic like Temple, actually, at fucking in Toronto. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. It was shit, a Hall but it was Halloween, good. Halloween Masonic party. Temple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's probably why we didn't do the show, bro. Yo, maybe, bro. I don't <laughs> know. I just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're not gonna go there. So but I'm it was. Go, but it was actually, crazy. I'm actually interested because, like, we were at a, we were doing events back then, right? A lot of events. So we were like, yo, we need a crazy performer from Toronto because, like, we need the the crowd to come out. And we thought of you guys right away. You I guys think it was smashing. 2018. It was 2018. I want to say. Mm -hmm. And um, we put an offer in. I don't think it ended up going through or anything like that. Or you guys uh, weren't down. All good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's water well, under the I, bridge I, now. I honestly didn't even know. Like, you that's know? the thing. Half the show <laughs> no. offers that came in, like... But, but so this is what I wanted to ask you. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you. So, yeah. like, in terms of that, like, even throughout the last, let's say, five, six years, mm. when it comes to, like, shows and... and 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 events and stuff like that. Do you have any say, or is it just like it comes through and it's like if they think it's good, they yeah, run like it. that's it goes through like a like a screening process. Because we give you a good offer, fam. We give you like a nice amount, yeah, bro. <laughs> like for for us, like this, this, this <laughs> what you have to understand. Like for for me and uh, Mino at the time, we we're like we never like shied away from making money. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think we ever said not to a show. Yeah. Unless it was like super underpaid. Okay. So like, hundred percent like. We didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was like, thirty. It was thirty k US. Yeah? <laughs> US. I think it was like thirty minutes. Yeah, it was pretty we good. It's pretty yeah, decent. It was, no, but yeah. I, I, you guys probably didn't know. It was a, it was for Halloween. You guys probably didn't know. And you guys were like hot, hot at that time. So yeah, I think you guys sense. were everywhere. And it's okay. We saved money anyway. So <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we ended up saving, <laughs> we ended up saving it, some money, bro. No, no, which was crazy. But and and, and I, I don't know how much you can talk about it. But I want to understand. Like I, uh, again, we always try to ask artists this. Like the deal. Like how mm. does the deal look? Because I always hear different things. It comes in the form of a loan. It's through this. It's through that. Like or it's, certain it's, even it's, you got to do a certain things you amount can do. of you know a certain amount of albums or tracks. Like how how did, how did it work like for you guys? Deal? Yeah. Yeah. Happy Dad is available at a lot of your local bars and restaurants. You might even find it at some saloons. If you've enjoyed a Happy Dad, then you know it goes well with your burger, your wings, pizza, and steak. <laughs> People in California eat it with their sushi, too. Go to happydad.com slash find to find a bar or restaurant near you so you can watch the games with the boys while enjoying an ice-cold daddy drink. The ladies love it as well. If your bar doesn't carry Happy Dad, then ask them to call their distributor to stock up. You can't have a burger with that skinny can, can you? It's time to man up and drink Happy Dad. Happy New Year. I mean, like, the record deal is pretty, like, it's pretty black and white. Like, you get a, you sign a deal. They give you, uh, uh, like, you, you have an obligation to hand in a certain amount of albums. So it could be, like, three albums or four albums. And, like, they're going to, I guess, like, for every album you hand in, 
like you're gonna get an advance. Like that's what they're gonna pay you out. And for each album, it gets gradually bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? Okay. Because obviously you're growing as an artist. True. Uh, yeah, like, and it, it, that's pretty much it in terms of like the label side. Like that's everything else is like pretty much your, you keep all your merch. You're like your shows are your shows. Like it's just the that's just like the royalty side that you gotta like, I guess go back and forth on in terms of like numbers, but. Everything else is like yours, like you know, like so. Every time we was doing a show, we we're making the money. It was like me and Camino and management splitting what we have to make, you know. And in terms of like the the deal, like you said, they're they're giving you an advance for every album. Mm -hmm. In terms of like an advance, right? I guess it's that they're hoping to make that money back from uh, sales or streams or whatever. Like yeah, like they so like I guess like how you yeah like they pretty much make their money back by like all your royalties, you know, okay. in terms of like the project itself doing well. Yeah. And, um, you know, so they're putting marketing behind it. Yeah. But they're making back that money times. Tenfold, yeah. Oh, they're yeah, making yeah. it back. Like, that's, okay. That's yeah, all right. That's, all right. Just, that's just, that, but that's like the whole music industry, right? Yeah, like I get you, uh, it. You sign that deal and like, it, it, it does help you. It gets you out of whatever situation you're in. And True. you got to kind of just be smart and utilize that situation and, and, and turn it into other avenues to make money. Right. True, because I guess a lot of artists, uh, it's it, I don't know if it's like a, a common thing or not, but a lot of them come from a, a sort sort of a, a place where it's like kind of hard to get out of. Like like you mentioned, like if you're trying to really take music serious, it's also hard to have five other jobs to pay yeah, the bills. 100%. You know what I mean? Especially nine to fives. Like I'm sure you 100%. find other ways, but so I feel like every artist gets that that fat check. It's like okay, now my life can like I can step away from certain things yeah, like and really go hard here. I guess it's just like. Uh, in, in, in a small term, I guess it's like freedom, right? Like True. you just, you kind of just want to be able to wake up and, and do what you love. And I feel like that's you getting paid to do what you love, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I look at it as more of like, just like what starts the engine and gets it going. And then the rest is on you. Cause like, like I feel like a record deal for a record deal that'll really like change your life. And that just be the only thing you're depending on. You got to like really be doing some crazy, crazy numbers, mm. you know? I feel mm. like it's just, I think it's more of just like a, like a stepping stool to get what you need to get in other avenues. Yeah. You know? Just to, just to like, ch yeah, change your life in a way. But you're also thinking yeah. like, that's the thing I feel like a lot of artists probably just sit back and like pray like, all right, if I just do 10 million streams, hundred million streams, like yeah. I can keep this rolling, but it's obviously not always that easy. Right. Yeah. And I, I just feel like as an artist, like you're like, I can't speak for any other artists. I'm just speaking for myself and like my situation when I was, I think like the real bag is like your shows. Like yeah. It's not, it's not so much that that deal is just kind of to, to give you peace of mind so you're not stressing to go like work a nine to five while you're making the next project. True. Uh, or it just gives you peace of mind when you're making that project. So right now, if I, if, like for example, I get that deal, right? Say I, I just want to fuck off and just go to France mm -hmm. and just get like an Airbnb and just cook an album out there for like two months. I could do that now. True. You know what I mean? Okay. I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do a show. Yeah, give me that freedom. I'm just like yeah. chilling, you know, like. I feel like that's more so what that money be used for, like in terms of like my situation, you know, yeah. that's what it was used for. The shows is what you're. That's the gravy. That's, that's the, like, bro, yeah. like you going out, you getting paid. Like, say you have four shows that week, and let's say your shows are thirty k a show. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's like, yeah. And then the next week you got that <laughs> yeah. again. That's yeah. like really your bread and butter in terms of this shit in the music industry. So did you guys take advantage of that when you guys signed the first deal? Like, how often were you guys doing shows? Yeah, we were like, I feel like we were like. Uh, we're we're much like we're we're more more so a show than like than than anything. Like I feel like we really were trying to be on the road twenty four seven. Like we damn near went to fucking India and China. <laughs> Come on, shit up, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for oh, real? We did. We did a South Asia tour. Oh shit, like, okay. we're, that's crazy. We're getting bags in every avenue, every place, every like. We like didn't have any show. Like we were just like yeah. always on the road. So it's like. But why not? If you're hot, like take advantage of it, right? 100%. How was the traveling, bro? That must have been crazy. It was fucking deadly, bro. Yeah. Like, I hated it. Like, <laughs> really? I even, yeah. Like it's I hate, tiring. I just hated the airport. Oh, but, me like, too. I fucking hate the airport. What? Like me, like the, the like I love being in a new city, in a new yeah. country, right? Like I just felt like it gives you like that new hit of energy. Mm -hmm. Like I could be running off two, three hours of sleep as soon as I land in another city, especially if it's a lit city. It's like I slept. 10 hours you know yeah. and like i'm ready to go I'm, I'm i'm going the whole day whole night like you know was there any spot that you're like damn i didn't think this, they were gonna be this lit here <laughs> shit um like the people or like the city i guess like the whole like i guess the, the whole maybe more maybe more the show where you're like damn i didn't think we'd have this many fans out here 
Chicago. Yeah. Like Chicago. Oh, yeah? And obviously like South Asia, like yeah, well, you're tr- China and and uh That's crazy. M- Mumbai and New Delhi. Like those places were like OD, like just nuts. People like, going crazy. Oh, they were going crazy. <laughs> Come on. Like it's like I thought like you would have thought we were like fucking Michael Jackson or some <laughs> shit. Like the way they were treating us was like I was just confused on what was going on. Like, you sure like, you know who I am, fam? <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. No, nah, like they like yeah, that was fucking nuts. Um I wanna go back a little bit, talk about your your duel with Camino. Because mm-hmm. I think that's super interesting because you don't really see too many duels, mm-hmm. really. Yeah, almost. Yeah, I can't even right? really name you another one at the moment. Yeah. There, there's there's more from the past. I don't know about really anyone present that's a duel. So, like, was that something that you guys were ever, you know, conversing about, communicating? Was there any problems? Like, how was it working with someone that close at that level? Um, because like, you guys have to get along. You guys have to agree to things, too. Like, how yeah, was that? no, for sure. Um, I mean, like, in the beginning, it was, like, really, like I said, it was just organic. Like, we just really, we didn't even know we were going to be a duo until, like, it, like, in the middle of making this album, you know, yeah. our first album. So, it was just organic. It was just, like, me kicking in with my homie, pulling up to his crib, cooking yeah. music together. We just kind of had this, like, routine schedule. Like, every every day I'd pull up to his crib at, like, 7 p.m., 6 p.m. We'd cook music till, like, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And then it would just repeat every day, like, you know. Jeez. Um um, I feel like like once we became like a like an actual duo and it was like on paper and we were like, you know, uh it's it's interesting because like you you kinda it's like living with someone, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you you guys get to know what it's like being really beside that person. Twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. So uh it was it was like it was cool, you know, and I feel like we were just friends at like it, so everything was clicking and getting along, but then obviously we'd have our moments where like we're beefing each other, or like fucking you know we don't see eye to eye on certain things, but like there was always like just like a mutual respect, and I uh, I feel like that's what uh, allowed things to go as long as they did, you know what okay. I'm trying to say? Yeah, because I feel like when you sign that once you sign that paper, it's it's kind of like marriage, you it's know, more like, like you know somebody and whatever, yeah. then you marry them, you sign the paper, you stand at the altar, and it's like okay, now you're gonna learn some things about this person that maybe you didn't know before yeah. good or bad like you know what i mean yeah, it no, could go either so. way right well it's even the decision making like that becomes more important too and you guys have both have to make decisions and and everything's moving so fast like you're saying right and and you're in the creative field which is like the i think probably yeah. the hardest place to have a partner to because see eye to eye. creatively you're never exactly on the same page as somebody else like yeah. it's impossible to be yeah no 100 percent. i feel like uh it was like where we had this like dynamic where like in terms of like business things that we had to do in terms of like okay should we go do the show here or uh like we have to go do this like anything that had to do like in terms of like the business there was like uh, a like um, definitely a mutual respect and like i feel like camino allowed me to kind of make that 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 final yes or no cool because he just like respect like danmer got us here you know yeah so mm-hmm. it's like it's true i'm, I'm not gonna fuck shit up you know yeah, like, I'm, I'm making a pretty you know sound choice so yeah. yeah you know so um but in terms of like creatively and shit i feel like uh like making music and stuff like that it was like pretty like balanced you know and it almost like tilted too because like i gave him that if he was like nah like yo this song's it like that i'd be like all right fuck it you know like i trust it yeah. the same way you trust me business wise i trust you music wise to, okay to make that that same decision you know but uh yeah that was pretty much the dynamic it's yeah. pretty much the dynamic so okay, so then moving forward, I guess, like, because now recently, um, you're pretty much, you're you're your own you're your own rapper now, yeah, right. So when did that decision happen? Um, I feel like uh, it was just like, yeah, like we just had like like differences in terms of like, uh, just where we seen things, okay, and that's just like normal shit, normal, right? Like bro. I just it's like a like, business, it's yeah, same. it's just normal shit, and like I feel like uh, like fans wanted it to like really be this like huge thing. <laughs> Course. But the media like, too, though, of course. Yeah, you know, but it was just like honestly, like we just got to a point where, like, yeah, we just didn't see eye to eye on certain things. Um, I like, I felt like we had to just, as we're getting older and this shit, and like growing and like this is actually be, like a business. We just got to be like very smart and like be thinking of everything, you know, yeah. and like not just like living for the moment, because True. living for the moment makes things it makes shit like shaky that person becomes a liability. So I just feel like um, 
that was kind of just what it was. Like, I yeah. just, I was, like, at a point in my career where I'm, like, you know what? Like, I kind of just, I think that in order for me to maximize my potential, who I am as, as an individual, I just got to go my own way and, like, do what I got to do. Like, I came into this game alone, so it's nothing for me to just go back into it alone, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, but I, I was, like, really grateful and, and like, like to this day, I, I praise everything that, like, me and homie did as like 88 glam and like what we've created for each other and what we've created for our families. Super nice. grateful for all that shit. You know, it was a, it was a cool journey, Yeah. but it was just like, yeah, like, you know, like anything, like you just kind of, it's just a different route, you know? And I, yeah. I just feel like fans really like emphasize shit and like <laughs> make things bigger than they are. And like, you just got to like, remember that, yo, like, this isn't like a, a marriage, you know what I mean? Like yeah, this yeah. is just like we didn't get divorced. Yeah, yeah you know <laughs> yeah. we didn't get divorced. It's just like homie chilling, he's over there. Yeah, but, but when you say like, uh, and, and I'm curious because we're kind of in a duel here. Like mm-hmm. when you say didn't see eye to eye on certain things, would you say it was more from the business aspect, or would you say it was more from the like just just like a, a lifestyle aspect? Like, it was like kind of like both because like um, this is the thing like when you like like when you're a duo. Everybody you bring in, it kind of, you're vouching for them. You True. know what I'm trying to say? True. And you kind of have to establish that that like ground where like okay, like I'm bringing you in, but just remember that me and me and this person, this is like our business. This isn't mm. like you can't come in here and like have say and change things around because you know. And I just felt like that that was what was happening a lot because like um you know obviously we're both like very social, but like. You know, I don't know. It's just like, it's, I feel like that's really what was happening. And it, it just started affecting the business. Like, yeah, fair. you know, like it, it, like productivity and stuff like that. So I was just like, you know, I just made like the executive decision for myself to just kind of, you know, yeah, let that be what it needs to be. I, I kind of like let it play out for as long as I could. Okay. But it just kept getting worse. So I was just like, you know. I, I just feel like we just need to just, you know, do so, what we got to do. So you kind of just said like, all right, <clears> like I'm just kind of going to kind of like step away from this. Yeah, like... I'm not even step away, like I like just close the chapter, just because ah. I was like, you know, like I, I need to do this for myself, true, in order to get where I need to go. Next step. Like my brain is always just trying to go on to what's next and and progress and like get where I need to go. So if like if I find that there's like a bump in the road that's just like not allowing that to happen, then you just have to do what you got to do at the end of the day. And how and how yeah. does that how does that affect now or how did that affect your uh like your your whole deal like essentially or what had it had it already finished what did the time play out or yeah. oh no so yeah like we so we were um our deal ended like literally the top of the pandemic like right before the pandemic hit okay so like 2020 like march around that time yeah um so we already were out of our deal like we okay. just had like we were just pretty much trying to get this last album out that we had mm-hmm. um and that's really what was like, I guess, make, allowing me to like hang on a bit more so okay. we could get that album out. Because we had like little obligations that we had to fulfill in order to get the album out. Because yeah. now when you had to go find a new distributor, uh, we had to like pretty much get a whole new deal to let that album that we were working a year and a half on come out. Come out. Yeah. So um, I feel like, yeah, that was pretty much it. Like in terms of like deal wise, like we didn't have any obligations leading up to the point of like it ending okay. you know and, and me going my route and him going his route yeah yeah yeah. that's just a gut feeling sometimes you know you just gotta if you had mm-hmm. a gut feeling you need to do your thing um do you have any advice for someone that might be thinking about or or they might be thinking about doing some sort of duo on their own just because like like i said it's pretty rare mm-hmm. for a successful duo like i don't really know that like outcast <laughs> no, I, don't think, I think they were more. They were more than two. No, people. it was two men's. No, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was two men's. Yeah, yeah, it was two men's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Andre, three um, but I'm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so maybe like anyone that's thinking about that, they have a friend that they've been making music with, mm-hmm. and they want to. They want to get in bed with them, as we could say. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any advice um, for for someone looking to do that? Yeah, like I mean, like don't shy away from it. It's fun. Like it, it, I feel like uh, it. Like if you guys, if you have another person that you're working with, and like. You guys are making some dope together. Go for it. Because, like, at the end of the day, it's just going to, you're not, like, it allows you, like, my, like what it helped me with was it didn't just leave me in the deep end to drown. You know, it kind of allowed me to build experience and build, um, just, like, I'm, like, I had, like, crippling, like, fear of being on stage before. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, when I was just, like, a solo artist. Yeah. And then, like, when it's a duo, 
you know, on stage yet. Yeah, still, like, you still get that, that. Half the pressure, though. Yeah, but, like, yeah, it's, yeah you know, oh, if I fuck up, he going to carry me. <laughs> yeah. If he fuck up, I'm going to carry him. It's like we both kind of have each other's back. So it really built, like, this, uh, I guess, just, like, familiarity for, like, rec- like uh, performing and stuff. Sick. Um, but, yeah, I just think that, like, it's it's fun, man. If you could go and you and your best friend or you you and one of your friends could, like, come together and, like, be serious and be creative and make dope shit, then why not? You know, it's just, you're going to have more fun. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I could promise you that. Like, I've done shows where it was just me as Derek Wise, and I'm, it's like I'm I'm traveling there. You know, it's it's not as fun as doing it with your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and in crazy. terms of your relationship, like, did you keep your relationship with Lamar and EXO, or how did that how did that kind of go after you're like, all right, I'm going to go do my own thing? Yeah, no, like, the, it's always been there, like, literally always been there um they're like like i said they're like big brothers before anything you know like they've literally like saved my life you know what i mean they've like they've taken me out of a lot of situations that i was in they've like helped me even like help my mom out help my family out they've like it's like that's just like some shit you can't there's really no there's nothing to you know say negative about that Mm -hmm. um i still have my relationships with everybody still cool like kick it you know i i I pulled up on nav right before he dropped his album played it back for me and shit like it's still love like it's all love like it was really like we we've been fucking with each other since like it's like eight nine eight years now around there so it's like this shit has like time and history behind it so it it wasn't just like okay i'm not signing you niggas anymore all right bet and Mm. go my own way it was like Nah, like this is still fam at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Mm-hmm. And and in terms of now going out on your own, like are are you signed with anybody? Do you plan to sign anybody? What's what's the <coughs> like what's the what's the push for you going forward? Yeah, so like right now I'm signed technically with uh Empire for distribution. Okay. Um it was it was cool, like even like just like to even have them like be ones to touch my music because I'm like a huge young doll fan and like I knew he was Same. fucking with Empire. Same with like Key Glock and like it's just cool to be in this lane, you know, because um, I knew that, like, approaching this point in my career, I wanted to, all be, like, I just wanted to own my own shit, too, at mm. the same time. So it, like, really, like, like I said, remember when you, like, make that list and, like, certain things just get clicked off? Yeah. I knew that, like, I want to, like, own my masters and, like, be this certain artist at a certain point in my life, and it just happened, you know what I mean? So it was, like, another thing that just, like, fell in my lap that I really wanted and I was asking for. Um, besides that, like, yeah, like uh have a EP on the way, the yeah. audition. Um, I got a full album on the way, the pageant. Uh everything's been done. Like I just been working nonstop. Like I, I feel like fans they obviously don't know what I'm doing because I'll I'll be like quiet on social media until I really have music to put out and like shit to do. Um, but that's pretty much what I've been working on for like the past like two years almost. So okay. I got like a lot of shit like on the way. No choice just came out last week. So uh, yeah. one of my new singles. So y'all could go check that shit out. So it's gonna come steady now. now oh, they, yeah, they can expect yeah, it. They yeah, can expect 100%. music steady. Okay. Mm. Okay, good what's shit. What's the what's the plan for like uh, your sound? Like what what can people expect from uh <clears throat> from you coming back solo? I mean shit, like I just feel like I'm so dynamic now as an artist that like it's like when I go into the studio I'm be making exactly what I wanna make and it comes out exactly like how I want it to come out. Um it's definitely like more more in depth in terms of like now I'm like actually like if you were like an 88 Glam fan, um, I wasn't really going in depth in terms of like explaining like my shit or yeah, my story on, on any of the records. It was more so just making like fun shit, you know. But now I'm like also making fun shit, but also getting in depth and like, you know, I'm I'm being very critical down to like the beats that I'm hopping on and like um the production, everything. Like uh yeah, like it's just like it's 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 honestly just like fun for me at this point. And like I feel like um, you always gotta kind of search for that shit as like a creative, you know. You just want to be making like shit that's also fun for you to create. So you gotta like it. One hundred percent. We ask a lot of artists this, just in terms of like the pressure that you feel to make music. Do you ever feel like, and even in the past, from even like a track like Bali, for example, like that mm. snapped, right? Like, do you yeah. ever feel pressure that's like, damn, like it's gotta be as good as that? Like, I gotta make something that the people are gonna go that wild to, or is it just like, yo, ch- times change, I gotta adapt, make something new. I mean, like, I think, like, uh, I feel like at that time, like, when it was, like, when I was, like, 88 Glam, like, <clears throat> I definitely had that pressure where we, me and Camille were just trying to make that next this, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now, like, I just feel like 
now it's kind of just making shit that what I realized is like when we were making all those hits and making songs that people resonated towards, um, that was just us making music that we, that we thought was cool. Yeah, you know, true. so now I just feel like that's the most important aspect of it. Cause like, you know, like if you're not, if you don't like the music, it's just like, you know, and I, I don't want to just go to the studio and try to just make a specific type of record. You know, I, yeah. I really just, I want to have fun with it and like really just do what I want to do, you know? That's how I think you build longevity as an artist, though. You just got to enjoy what you're doing. Oh, 100%. And, and it's just, I kind of like, I find it interesting. This is a little bit further back, but. When you're coming up, I, I do feel like it, and you kind of mentioned it. It was like um, it was a very like hipster era, especially like mm. in Toronto. It was like that Dundas and Ozington, oh, yeah. Queen like, Street you know visions, I mean? bro. Queen Street, yeah. Kensington vibe. Like, were you expecting that? Like, did you think that that was gonna be the crowd that was gonna be fucking with your music the most? Um, I, not really. Like, <laughs> I honestly didn't. You know what I mean? Um, that's the thing. You really never know who's gonna fuck with what. True. You actually never know. Like it's 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 crazy. You could try to cater music to a certain crowd. Like I remember being in the studio and like I'm like, all right, fuck, I'm gonna make like a, a record for girls, and then like, damn it, it's all niggas that like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, shit, like we'll try again. <laughs> like you know, yeah. um, yeah, I just feel like that's that's what I, goes back to what I was saying. Like you really just gotta have fun making your music because you honestly never know who's gonna enjoy it and who's gonna fuck with it. True. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I like, but there are artists that can do that. Like, yeah. I feel like, obviously, like, Drake's one of those where, like, I feel like when he wants to make, like, a female record, it just comes out exactly, like, what he wants, you know? I, some artists are really good at doing that shit. Some artists, I just feel like they just got to have fun and, like, hits come out, you know? I'm, I'm curious. Have you ever linked with Drake? You ever been around Drake? Uh, I never linked with him personally. Uh -huh. I've definitely seen him around here and yeah, there, yeah. you know? But never, like, linked with him personally, no. And, and in, terms of, in terms of The weekend, because I feel like Abel, he's such a low-key guy. Hmm. If you could say anything about him, his his aura, his presence when he's around, because obviously you've been around him, how would yeah. you explain it to somebody that would never be able to be in a room with him? Um, I just think that like he's just like, he's like, he's funny, you know. He's like <laughs> he's a genuine person. So, uh, definitely like, he, like I don't know, like I don't know what other people's perception is on him. Like I don't know if they like just seem to be like a serious person or like a like quiet person. Like I, I really don't really know because I feel like I've known, like I've been in that circle for so long that like my, I have a specific vision of who he is as a person. But yeah, like he's just like super chill, like mad mm -hmm. chill, like, you know, like, um, yeah, like. <laughs> just like a normal really, dude, like just a normal guy. Yeah, like, like he, he's mad chill. Like that's what I could honestly say. Like he's a, also very like um movie, movie guy like he like big on like like talking films and shit you know okay um that's pretty much all i could like really say like he like there's nothing like that like stands up where i could be like nah he's like very mellow or serious uh -huh. or, you know like he's like really chill like like i really think people chill. just people just like when well, obviously when you think of a um you know someone of that stature who's had like that crazy level of success people always have preconceived ideas of who this person may be mm -hmm. you know but then the reason i ask is because i feel like you've obviously been in more intimate settings where there's no pressure to be like uh, some for something no pressure to be this superstar so it's just like average guy like he's just an average yeah, just, he's just like, a normal dude yeah no 100 percent. like I, I like i i see like i'm i'm kind of understanding how people would like see him as an artist like for example like like when i think of like prince i i would think that like prince is like super to himself and doesn't really talk doesn't even laugh you know mm -hmm. but he's probably not like that if you actually know him so i could i could understand i guess that perspective on it for right? sure for sure um yeah like no for me it's just like mad show he's like the homie like mm. like literally toronto homie like you know that's yeah, crazy. so it's crazy he's from our city too like crazy to see how much yeah. how much success has come out of our city i'm i'm curious uh, you know, you mentioned like being smart with the money and, and the money that comes from the deal and understanding how to use it and leverage yourself and not be so reliant on a deal type of thing. Mm. Outside of music, is there anything that you're invested in, you like to invest in, that you kind of tried to set up for yourself mm -hmm. so that, God forbid, this music thing died out one day, yeah. that you'd sort of be in a good in a good position? Honestly, like I feel like I got onto it pretty late, but I think like real estate, yeah. like that's like the most safest automatic thing. Like I haven't really dived into like, much crazy investments yet like i have something that i'm currently working on in the back end okay but 
sorry, this. No, it's okay. Happy <laughs> dad, so happy yeah. dad, yo. You got me, you know. You got me on my shit right now. Um, now, nah, like, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, like I Real feel estate? like, um, yeah, I didn't dive into anything crazy far fetched. You know what I mean? Like, I, mm. I feel like obviously I dabbled in like crypto here and there, and I like hit big at one point. I was like, oh shit, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> but then like some other shit happened, and we, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I feel like I'm still, I'm still like growing in that sense where like I'm finding out things that I really have interest in and like want to put my money behind and want to you know take down like a venture down that road um sure. but yeah i just i feel like i've been pretty safe i haven't done anything i haven't taken any like crazy investment risks yet okay that like i could honestly say is like an avenue yet you know mm -hmm. besides real estate so not real estate's the way to go bro. what have Straight you up. what have you learned in terms of like the company you keep the people that are around you i think that's super important when you're coming up mm -hmm. you get a lot of success <clears throat> all at once especially like that um, what have you learned around, uh, maybe like, do you still hang out with people that you used to before? Did you have to, you know, cut off some relationships? Mm -hmm. Did you have to like, what, what, what was that like for you? Um, I just, uh, I think that like, in terms of like the company that you keep, you just got to be very critical and like, um, at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, is this person doing positive or negative for me in life? Um, is this person a good influence or a bad influence? Does this person want to see me win? And most importantly, does this person want to see me win even if they're not in the picture? Yeah. Right? Because that was like a big a big learning point for it's me. It's hard to tell, bro. It, it's yeah. really hard. Like, yeah, yeah like if, if because I've had situations where like people are in the picture and it's like, damn, you're like thousand and one percents being put into it. And then as soon as like, I don't know, maybe they're not fit for a certain role or someone else is outperforming them or is more suited for another for that job yeah. they like flip on you and then yeah. now they're your op yeah now they're like within a day they're, yeah they're writing captions on you like on, on instagram <laughs> they're they're stopping your songs from being spun in clubs stop uh hey, yo it's no real like life. that that it's intense real life. yeah it's real life um that sucks bro so it's like i feel like you gotta um you gotta be very critical like yeah. you just gotta um make sure that those things that I listed are, are that has to be your priority yeah. in terms of like people in your circle. And um, I guess just like not being afraid to like obviously go out there. You can't allow those scenarios that were like negative, that like maybe you didn't make the best decision. You can't allow those scenarios to stop you from making these new relationships because you can meet, um, you can meet the key to your future you know, in terms of like what, whatever you're doing as an artist or a creative or a business person, you can meet that person tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, so you can't, it's best to not go into those situations with trauma that prevents you from meeting those people. Cause I just feel like this business is like an endless growing thing. And like, you can always, as the journey goes on, that's, you might find new people on that journey that elevate your business or elevate your company or elevate you, just you as a person. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. I, th I think it happens a lot. And once you get fucked over, you kind of, like you said, you have those trust issues where now next person, maybe next manager, next this, next producer comes in. You're like, mm, I seen you, but like I seen this happen before. Mm. So you kind of, you kind of got to yeah. put that past. That's, that's, that's interesting. Um, your creative process, how, how do you, how do you work in a studio? Um, how do you create what's going on through your head when you're, when you're doing <clears> that? I just feel like every record's different, you know. Like, I, I, like my natural process is just to like go in the studio. I don't, I don't really like writing, so okay. I just like kind of just go with the record. If the record's going, I'm punching, or if I'm like lit enough, I'm probably just freestyling on it. Um, Sick. I, I, like, in terms of like who I work with, I work with Alex on Weed, aka Alex Musica, has been like day one engineer since like '88 Glam One, you know, Sick. Um, slash producer, and um, I work with Jimmy. And like they like he's like he's not day one because he's so young. He just became like part of the team in terms in terms of like engineering and stuff. But um, sick. Yeah, like I feel like it's just like usually in the studio, it's like um me and them, and we just like we're just going through it, man. Like we're just putting beats on, and or we're making production right there on the spot. And like I'm just I'm floating on it, doing whatever yeah. I gotta do. And like I try not to like overthink. You know, as, as hard as that sounds, like there's a, a lot of times you be like overthinking records and they don't come out how you want. But I just try not to overthink it all and just like, just get through the record, you know, and like have fun while I'm doing it. Yeah, you know. So you're even saying like, for example, with with you going solo now, like maybe your sound is gonna change 
in the fact that you're going to be talking more about maybe your personal experiences. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah, like for cool. sure. Like definitely like more, more like intricate with like what I'm talking about in terms of just like, I feel like with 88 Glam, I wasn't doing that. Like I just feel like I was just kind of just like, you know. like Just making bangers. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like just like more, more swag shit. Not downplaying what I was doing. Of course, of course. I'm just... Just a different type of music. Well, I thought it was impressive too with 88 Glam because you were you changed your flow a lot too for <clears throat> for half yeah. those tracks. Yeah, no, for sure. Right? For sure. I just felt like uh yeah, because like when you're a duo, I just feel like you gotta compliment the other person. Yeah. I gotta compliment you. So like if like I sound better at a certain tone or doing a certain flow, that we're we're constantly just bouncing off each other. Yeah. You know, so I feel like he would do a flow and then like I would I would punch in and like I would just kind of like you know bounce yeah, off that flow yeah. and like vice versa. You That's know? exactly how it sounded from the tracks too. To be honest, yeah, no, for sure. In in terms of in terms of your music now, if there's anybody you could collab with, who would it be? Um, shit, it's a hard question because like, damn, like I feel like, shit, we're both to manifest it right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is it. I'm gonna I'm come like, back to this um, clip. I think like uh. Like rap wise, like in terms of like rappers and shit. Um, like I said, I was like a huge Young Dolph fan. Okay. Um, it would be like probably to get like a Young Dolph feature, rest okay. in peace, you know, something like that. Um, Key Glock, he's nice too. I fuck with his shit. Uh, there's like obviously like new artists that are like upcoming and stuff that I fuck with as well. Um, but yeah, like um, I think like in terms of rap wise, like that. But in terms of like production and like beats and I don't know, I kind of would want to, like, just do some experimental shit with, like, you know, just, like, indie artists and stuff. Like, maybe even Tame Impala, do, do some, okay. like, cool okay. shit with them. Okay. But, like, some shit where you wouldn't even know is Tame Impala on the record with me. Okay. Just, like, you know. Um, yeah, we're going to make that happen. That'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah, Tame Impala is crazy. Yeah, I'm, like, such a fan of his shit. So, it's, like, um, that'd be something that would just be like a bucket list thing something cool to do you know yeah yeah is there any uh artists coming out of toronto younger that you're excited for um there's a lot of there's a lot of like good musicians in the yeah. city right now um i started listening to um this artist named bushman he's lit yeah yeah uh he just like, dropped a, he dropped an album i think right yeah he's just yeah. dope he's, he's sick uh i like uh i don't like i there's been a lot of good music, bro. Like I fuck with like um Doobie shit. I fuck with Price's shit. I fuck with YG. I fuck with uh It's like a long list, man. Like, <laughs> shit, there's just so many off, now, bro. you know? Yeah. There is a lot. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, bro, so in terms of performing, you're going to be doing some shows now solo? Yeah, so like um like I said, I have my EP dropping. Sick. You know, um I'm going to let that shit circulate. Still doing shows again. Um coming out the bag with it. Um, yeah, like literally just getting back in, right back into it. You know what I mean? It's been it's been actually like a while since like I've done a show. I think the last show I did it was Canada Day. In was it Edmonton? Yeah, we did Canada Day Edmonton. Sick. That was like that was even so that was like eighty eight glam. That was my last eighty eight glam show. Okay, twenty was it twenty twenty two? Yeah. So like last year Canada Day. Um, but yeah, like this would be like. Once I put out the EP and like get that shit circulating, I'm 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 definitely gonna be doing shows. You is know? there is there anything major that you took from let's say the last five years now that you're gonna implement into your new projects and you going solo? It could be business wise, it could also be music wise. Um, I think like just really consistency, cause like that was the biggest. I feel like if there was anything that like I would have done different in terms of like um prior shit like with 88 Glam, it was consistency, like. Cause like we, we were like signed to a major, yeah. So we weren't able to drop music when we wanted. Like, okay. The, like fans were actually like pissed off at us. Like, oh, well, you just, could just drop and you had to wait. Like you have like, so when you sign a deal, yeah. They're like, okay, this album has to come out, and then you can't really drop. You can't just wake up and be like, yo, I want to drop a single, Fuck. or I just want to drop a yeah. Lucy. Because it affects the album drop. Exactly. Okay. And then and I don't know. There, it, it's like. They literally have full control of what you do. So yeah. it's like, not XL, I'm, I'm talking more like Universal Republic. They got to approve everything. So it's mm. like, it, they don't they don't care for like little single records to come out that aren't on an album. They want like full bodies of work. Big so money. Like, yeah, so it was just like, we would like just kind of be stagnant and our fans would see it until like we have an album ready. But sometimes like the album takes a while. Like 
So we were like trying to drop 88 Glam 2 for damn near like a year and a half. Damn. Yeah, like, like we, after it being done. I mean, like, like we we're we we're still kind of working on it. Yeah, but it was like we, I don't know, like we it just literally took long. Like, yeah. I don't know why. Like it was just like finding the sound that we wanted to do. Then we pivoted left, pivoted right, and then we're like, ah, yeah, you know, like let's do this sound, that sound. Um, but in the midst of us making that project, we weren't even like dropping anything. So it was like quiet until yeah. we had another album. Yeah. So it was like I feel like that really hurt, like in terms of like. Just our trajectory. In What's terms momentum, of, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. And I feel like that's real important, especially nowadays. Music comes out so fast. People's attention mm -hmm. span is so small. Uh, so you're gonna try to be more consistent now? Oh yeah, like it's crazy because like the fans don't even don't even know that shit. Like you know they'll black they'll, they'll get cheese. They'll be like, yo, <laughs> no music for a year. What the fuck's going on? But they oh, don't yeah. know what happens behind mm -hmm. the behind the scenes. Well, no, hundred percent. So so, like, so no more being uh being afraid of performing then, even no. though you're gonna be going out alone. <laughs> no, 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 no. That shit dead now. Like, <laughs> don't get it twisted though. Like you always get butterflies. Yeah, of yeah. Course. Of course. Always. I think those are good butterflies. Those are like you're about is, to do yeah, something yeah. that's fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. What was that's the biggest show you've done, like, <clears throat> like attendance wise? Besides like Coachella. I mean Coachella. I mean fun. yeah, it's not really besides because that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I was <laughs> shocked though when we did Coachella because it was like packed in front of us. Like yeah, it was like. I don't even know how many fucking kids are over there, bro. I think it's something. I think it's like fifty to like a hundred thousand per stage there. Some oh. shit. Yeah, for the whole for the whole. I'd be yeah, fucking yeah. It's it's crazy. Holy shit! Yeah, it was crazy. Um, how how long was the set? It was just a basic set. I think it was like forty minutes, okay. forty five minutes, or maybe even was it like thirty? Yeah. Um, we did there, and then we also did another festival in Vancouver. Actually, it was a uh, faded in the park. I think that was actually like that was like Coachella is obviously a way bigger festival, but there was way more. It was concentrated. There was only two stages. Okay, and like it was like all the fans that were like mm. there at the at the festival. They pulled up to our stage, so that was probably one of our biggest shows too. Our biggest uh, crowds that I, that I performed in front of. What's that feeling coming off stage? Just being like, holy fuck! Oh, like these people. Yeah, I think that was like the first. Um, that was the first time that like. Um, like I had fans because before we I even like went on like a real tour tour I think it was in the midst of our tour mm -hmm. it was the first time I had that amount of fans like screaming my lyrics at me yeah it was, Yo, it was, was so yeah, crazy it was, it was sick like I was definitely like a surreal moment I remember like just like standing on stage and being like wow shit all right fuck we need another hit like, <laughs> yeah this is crazy this yeah, how they yeah. react into one hit we need another one bro that's addicting probably yeah you you ever go you have to go on stage lit or what. <laughs> like you, you don't. Have, you can let us know, eh? But I'm, I'm assuming that you guys, you're going on stage lit. Oh shit, man! Like this is the problem, bro. Like, <laughs> this is the problem. Like I can be super honest with this shit. I'll just be transparent. Like do it, bro. I never did. I did one show sober. Yeah. One show. And how did that one go? Terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> of course, was bad. Bro, like of we course. was. It was literally yo taking out fucked up. This shit is. It was the night that we beat Philly with that Kawhi shot. Okay, oh, shit. we're in Philly. Oh, <laughs> so like we're oh. we're on tour in Philly. Kawhi just hit this buzzer beater on on these niggas' heads. Yeah. We go out and like I don't know why. Me and Kumi were like, "Yo, we're not gonna drink." It was like awkward. We're like looking at each other. Like, would you guys have I'm Raptors like, jersey on? Or <laughs> no, no, no. It was just awkward though. Like we were just like on stage trying to get excited for for lyrics that we're saying and like. We just couldn't find it. Yeah. It wasn't hitting? I'm like, at this point, I think we need like an AA meeting or something. <laughs> like, if we can't even get hyped to our own shit without having some fucking Don Julio on us. Yeah. Something yeah. wrong. But that was our first and last sober show. I feel like that's normal though, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like artists just getting a bit lit to go on, crack the nerves a bit. I mean, everyone yeah. watching you is lit too at the same time. Yeah, right? Like most of them. So it's kind of like, yeah, kind of, it's you're fitting. Kinda joining them, it's kind of fitting them, that you like... Know? Yeah, <laughs> it's just awkward when you're like sober and you're trying to like, like yeah, get in it, get yeah, in it, and like you're like lock, you lock eyes with a fan and they're like super amped and they're going at it, but you're sober, so you're like, you can't really match their you can't fire, even match bro. It, yeah. Nah, it's weird, man. I'll never do that shit ever again. <laughs> this shit is so quiet. That's lit. All yeah, right, bro. Yeah, like, I mean, funny, we're pumped man. for you because, like, <clears throat> when I seen you're going solo, bro, like, I was, I was super amped for you. Thank I know you, it's bro. a new, new chapter for you. Yeah, uh, we're all super excited. I know the city's city's pumped mm -hmm. to be hearing you again. Um, so we'll keep an eye out. Run this so. back another episode too, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, no, no, hundred percent, man. But give him the but we got a famous question. question. Yeah, give him the main we question. We got a famous but. question on this podcast, right? We're the MBH podcast. Money buys happiness. Mm -hmm. I want to know 
Do you believe money buys happiness? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's no, smart. I see the smile right away. I'm like, all right, hundred percent. And let, like, this is the thing. It's subjective, right? Because some people are just like on some like real humble shit, where like they don't care. Like they'll damn near make a bologna sandwich and like, <laughs> like you know. For me, if you're asking me this question, hell yeah. Yeah. Like, like I'm trying to go. Like if I go out to a restaurant, I'm trying to get the truffle with the you mm-hmm. know. Or if I go to. Like if I if I travel somewhere, I'm trying to stay in a five star hotel or like it's glam boy, bro. Yeah, what are you like, talking I'm about? I'm not trying to sip cheap champagne. <laughs> like I'm trying to really do this. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, money does buy happiness. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, like that's not even debatable. I agree with you. Thank you. We, we agree. Bro, trust me. Me. We, we agree with you. Bro. Imagine being broke out here in these streets. Like, can't be. Especially can't now, be, milk's nah. like seventy five bucks a bag. No, like <laughs> on, honestly, what we always say, bro, and I think like you, you pretty much encompassed it. And you said it earlier. Is like the two things. Is like how you make your money. So mm-hmm. if you enjoy what you're doing, you're having fun with the music in, in your case, and you make money that way. Like amazing. Like mm-hmm. that's the first step. The other side of it is what you do with it. So if you're spending it on shit that you that you want to spend it on it's making you happy mm-hmm. then go for it you're giving back you're helping your mom out stuff like that like of course bro you're going to be happy right those two yeah. things you like make you like how you make it you use it in a good way 100%, happiness 100 percent. i always say this like the hardest thing in the world is being broke that's the facts. hardest thing that's like fact, like bro. like hard work is one thing but the hardest thing in the world is being broke bro mm-hmm. like imagine that shit you know and like I, you just gotta like wake up every day and thank God that's not the position that you're in if you're not in that position, you know. So that's like kind of why I'd be standing by for sure. Yo, yeah, I like yeah. that. The hardest thing in the world is being broke. Dean, you heard that? I hear it. Yeah, <laughs> you hear that, bro? Come on, man. <laughs> nah, but listen, man. We appreciate you coming out and doing this. Nah, thank it's, you guys for having me. No, no, it's good. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Ernesto, you already like, know. Twenty years in the fucking making. This? Jeez, bro. That's Probably. crazy. That Probably. is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Another twenty, fam. <laughs> love bro love no it's yeah, been good know. it's been good some good shit coming obviously we'll drop all your all your <clears> stuff <throat> below and whatnot and guys if you made it this far we love you appreciate you you know what to do like subscribe leave a comment let us know what you thought it's been a pleasure man appreciate bro. it bro thank you for having me man dean we out yeah.